Hello everybody. Happy Thursday, August 30th, 2018. I am in Kennewick, Washington. My last full day here in the desert in the Tri-Cities area, Southeast uh, Washington. And uh, another beautiful day. Have to apologize for yesterday because uh, the phone overheated. My phone got too hot. It was only 70 degrees outside, so normally it does not do that. And uh, it was a really good topic too. So I know the enemy did not want that to be shared. So it was what it was. In fact, I'm gonna sh share a little bit about what goes into these broadcasts because a lot of people don't uh, know all the stuff that I have to uh, balance. I mean, one of the things is, of course, the heat and the sun because if the sun and the heat is bad then uh, that will cause of course the phone to overheat and that's not good and um, there we go and then the other thing I mean several factors obviously um, in fact this just took place I was getting ready I'm, I'm right here in the backyard of uh, Dawn Casanova Linegar and her husband Paul I've been staying here this week I'm leaving tomorrow to go to Portland and uh, I was ready to go just five minutes before the show started and the next door neighbors putting in a swimming pool and they it was all quiet up until five minutes before and then all of a sudden they start to break out this uh, bobcat and start making noise with these rocks and stuff and it's like ah uh, so I had to move this to the other side of the house so they'd be quiet um, but there's a lot of factors that go into these um, such as you know there could be people walking by there could be rattlesnakes, you know, that coming next to me and starting to shake their tails and uh, coyotes and animals and so forth. Um, you know, I could have a bad signal. We sometimes see that where people can't hear. It could be windy, you know, raining, all kinds of factors. So I try to have a nice backdrop wherever I'm traveling, uh, but at times it can not work as well as others. So anyway, it's working now. I don't see any... Uh, coyotes or horses or uh, rattlesnakes in the grass or uh, rocks so we should be good to go thank God so um, uh, yesterday also I uh, confirmed I'm going to be in Modesto California now September the 6th that's next Thursday a week from today speaking to the Christian businessmen fellowship group as well as women come to that as well so again if you're in the Modesto California area come on out we're actually going to be holding it uh first time i've ever spoken i think in a restaurant at the golden corral i haven't been to golden corral forever so i gotta make sure i don't eat anything for breakfast so that i can eat it's going to be a, a lunch time uh at noon they uh, have special speakers that come in there um at noon so um looking forward to uh, that so and there's some other stuff that's going on in california that i'll let you guys know about also some some uh, larger churches that are starting to reach out, which is awesome. The Lord said get ready for that like five weeks ago. And so there's some pretty humongo churches now that are saying, hey, maybe, maybe we should do some deliverance with our people so that we can get them pure and spotless. Speaking of pure and spotless, my book is done. It's finished. It is going to be edited uh, over the weekend by my good friend, Tina Marie Kirkpatrick. So kudos to her. She loves to edit. Um, that's uh, what she did a lot of when she was with, uh, well, she's still at HP. Um, <laughs> so, got to keep my mouth shut on that. Uh, so anyway, great uh, news there. It will be out um, hopefully by next week. I'm also having a first time ever a professional graphic designer that's going to design the cover of the book. I'm also looking to get it endorsed by a person that you will all recognize. His father was famous as far as in the spiritual realm. And you'll all know him. He actually, uh, his father was just about an hour and a half away from me when I grew up and I used to watch him on uh, TV. So I will let you know, again, he's reviewing the book right now and he's going to let me know if he is going to be able to endorse it. And uh, the Lord told me to reach out to him and that he would. So so we shall see. Um, 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 so to, in fact, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I woke up at 1.30 this morning uh, local time. I've been sleeping, I don't know, less and less. The Lord gives me a lot of insight 
early whenever I wake up and uh, dream. So I had a mixture of insight and revelation, uh, confirmation about some of these, uh, the, uh, a specific larger church and uh, it was, just blew me away. Also had a dream that kind of confirmed about uh, me and this other uh, person that we're getting ready to do ministry together starting next week. And um, it was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool dream. And in fact, uh, I can share a little bit of, of it. Um, we were together and I was letting her listen to um, a recording on my phone and um, I turned it up really loudly and uh, the recording essentially was trumpets that were being played in heaven, you know, from the heavens. They could hear on earth basically the trumpets. And I know that around the world people have been hearing trumpets, you know, random trumpets that have been playing very loudly, you know, up above in uh, trying to get people's attention to prepare them you know, to be pure and spotless before Christ comes back. He's, he's, he's coming back, you know, sooner than a lot of people maybe think. So, anyways, um, uh, it really ties into the Pure and Spotless book, too, that uh, uh, we are, uh, you know, it's finished and she's doing some editing. So, anyway, um, you guys probably know. Um, anyway, I'm going to tr try to be mums the word until next Tuesday when I will announce officially who is going to be coming alongside Restored to Freedom. So anyway, that all said, um, the topic of the day, in fact, Dawn just joined us, Dawn casanova -Linegar. Um She is uh, headed to, uh, what, Target, I think, <laughs> right now. So um, have had a great time. I've been uh, here at the house since uh, Sunday, I think it was, or Saturday. Saturday, yeah, Saturday. And then also I was here like a week, two weeks before that, something like that. And I've had an, an extremely great time speaking and, and discussing and sharing God stuff, which is awesome. And uh, there's been, I think, three topics this week that have spun off from the conversations that Don and I have had. So Don does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. She's like my top deliverance person for Restored to Freedom. And uh, she's amazing and awesome and has such a heart for the Lord. Her sister Autumn hung out with her brother Jesse yesterday for a couple of hours. And uh, in fact, I may be, I may be bringing on, uh, Jesse doesn't even know this yet, so if Jesse watches this, I'm thinking of having him on the show tomorrow as well as Dawn. So um, we will see um, if that happens, I hope so, because tomorrow's my last day here and then I'm moving on to Portland, so. So anyway, um, she has spun, spun on three of my topics of conversations we've had that have become the topics of the day. So today's topic, we were talking about it last night, is uh, titled Embrace God's Crucible Process. And uh, I don't know, it's really neat um, because I didn't, th I mean, I know I think other people have talked about this, but um, I didn't really think about this, but it really is true. You know, when we get serious about doing damage to the enemy, you know, if we're not doing anything, you know, that's gonna harm anything that the enemy's doing, then the enemy pretty much is like, I don't really need to bug them with a whole bunch of spiritual warfare because they're already on my side. They're not doing anything, you know. So obviously the enemy comes against Christians that are, especially those that are doing things in the kingdom. That's why a lot of Christians are tormented by demonic voices, demons, will torment Christians all the day long because they try and get them into fear and worry and anger and pride and taking offense and all this crap, you know, and uh, worse, you know, depression and drinking and all this stuff. So, so when we get serious about doing damage to the enemy, walking into our God-given callings, we must go through a process that can be very, very, very painful um, that I like to liken towards a crucible. Crucible is something that uh, you may remember back in, I don't know, chemistry class, if you had that in high school. Um, but I looked it up online, um, and it says this about a crucible. It says it's a ceramic or metal container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subjected to very high temperatures. It says the crucible tipped and the mold filled with liquid metal. It also says this, and pay attention to this, a situation of severe trial or in which different elements interact leading to the creation of something new. So how perfect is that for discussing what we go through when we're Christians, when we're coming from 
Maybe we grew up with Christian mom and dad, but yet we were hurt by them. Maybe we had a sexual violation against us. You know, that's what we talked about oftentimes. That's how you get the spirits of Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab. That's why so many people have those spirits. The strong men that are out there is because they were hurt by their dad or their mom, because they were controlling, they were manipulative, they were mean to them, or they were just rejected by them. They weren't around them much, or they were sexually violated. So what happens is you hear the voice of the enemy, and it causes you to do the bad things that you do. Taking, you know, stressing, yelling, and screaming and stuff at your husband or wife, and being controlling, manipulative, lying, deceiving, prideful. How many people of us have pride? You know, I used to have a lot of pride. It was not good. So we have to go through a refining process, you know, just like gold, for example. You know, gold extracted by amalgamation or cyanidation contains a variety of impurities, including zinc, copper, silver, and iron. So two methods that they say they're commonly employed for that is called the Miller process or the wall wheel process. So I looked up what the process is, you know, how to uh, do all this. And it's interesting. It says part one uh, of the six processes, you have to first melt the gold. You have to go through. So basically you're, you're likening yourself where the Lord's taking you through a process. He takes the mess that we are at the time, so maybe we're in our 20s or 30s when we decide to give our life to Christ, um, and not all the demons go at that point. We all, we, we all know that now, um, because we still are getting tormented by these thoughts. So it says here, number one, place your gold, you know, your gold jewelry, powder, or nugget inside of a crucible. It says, most crucibles are made of graphite, which enables them to withstand the melting of the material inside. Number two, place the crucible on a fireproof surface. And then it says, number three, aim an acetylene torch at the gold. Aim the flame at the gold until the gold is completely melted. So that is the process that the Lord is taking us all through to try to refine us. And that oftentimes the refining process is likened to a repentance. We have to repent for our pride, repent for our sins, and so forth. And, uh, and that can take us our whole lives. Some of us never get through that whole process because we hear the voice of the enemy so strongly. We get mad. We get angry. We want to control, manipulate other people. You know, we hear the voice of the enemy strongly. You know, then it says, number four, what do you do? It says, pick up the crucible using crucible tongs, and then you pour it. It actually shows it pouring it out here. If you can see it or not. Separate the gold into small pieces, it says, and allow them to harden. This is called making shot. If you are refining small pieces of jewelry like rings, then you can simply melt the piece without making shot particles. Part two says add the acid. Choose the appropriate container. For every ounce of gold that you want to refine, you will need 300 milliliters in container capacity. Use containers large, heavy gauge plastic buckets or Pyrex Vision wear pots. Number two, wear protective gear. You know, so it's a process that can be dangerous, can cause, you know, it says problems with your eyes and you need to wear rubber to protect your clothing and a rubber apron and so forth. So you can think about all the things that are we're going through in the process. We don't like it. We want to get and have peace in our life all the time. We don't want to change, essentially, is what we're saying. So we're getting into marriage with someone. Oftentimes, you will see them through the lenses of the enemy and you will strive with them and fight with them and argue with them thinking that it's all their fault, when in reality, it's yours. And you don't wanna see that. And the enemy, of course, spirit of Leviathan, will twist things, twist the truth, and you'll never see it in yourself. That's why I see a lot of people when I'm doing counseling deliverance, when I did a lot of them, they would always say, oh yeah, my, my uh, husband, he's got Jezebel, he's just horrible. And then I ended up like staying with him, and I'm like, wait a minute, she's got Jezebel. He's a complete Ahab. How can she not see this? It's because Leviathan will cause that covering of your eyes. You won't see it correctly. And it says, number three, place the container outdoors in a well-ventilated area. The acid reactions in the aqua regia process produce strong and noxious fumes that are extremely dangerous. So again, <laughs> we're going through trying to get freed from these demonic spirits. And it can be stinky sometimes. It can be yucky and uh, ugly. It says, number four, pour 30 milliliters of nitric acid for every ounce of gold into your container. Allow the acid to react with the gold for 30 minutes. Number five, add 120 milliliters of hydrochloric acid 
or muriatic acid for every ounce of gold in the container. Allow the solution to sit overnight until all the acid fumes have been dispelled. So that's why it takes time. It takes time sometimes. We cannot. There's a process that we go through. We cannot, you know, I could not become who I am today overnight. I had to go through a refining process myself. You know, the Lord did a lot of deliverance of me before I married my second wife so I could go through a lot of extreme stuff so I would understand and know what the spirits of Jezebel Leviathan can do to a person, how they would behave. But a lot of us that we're working on getting them delivered from these, they don't get 100% delivered the first time. They have to go through it a second time or a third time or a fourth time. They have to take maybe several months because, for instance, they've got a spirit of pride that's strong on them. And they're like, I don't have any problems. You're the problem. And the enemy's got them so they cannot see it. And so that's why it takes time. And um, also, um, you know, maybe you have come through the other side, but you're still having to go through more because the Lord is stretching you. You know, uh, you have to go through, like, for instance, when I work out, I lift weights uh, three times a week, my upper body. And then I do my cardio every single day. Go for a walk sometimes for a couple of hours a day and just pray in tongues, listen to the Lord. I enjoy exercising, you know, to relieve um, stuff. But uh, you, you won't get stronger if you lift less and less weight. You know, the Lord knows who you're going to become ultimately. You know, he, I, had, I didn't even know who the heck I was until <laughs> January, the first week of 2009 at the Morris Cirillo conference I went to. And these people started prophesying, telling me about, hey, you're going to have a worldwide ministry. You're going to prophesy. You're going to have deliverance and healing. You're going to work with people that have gotten married that are having issues and divorces. All the stuff they prophesied, that was all fine and good. But I still had to go through a process of enduring a lot of pain I didn't want to go through. I wanted it to be over with. I wanted to start doing this ministry. And the Lord's like, nope, you can't. You still have more stuff you have to go through. And I have to change things in you too, Nelson, because you're not perfect yet. And I'm like, oh, I want to be perfect. I want to be like Moses. I want to be like Abraham. I want to have extreme faith. Well, you can't have extreme stuff of faith until you go through extreme amount of circumstances. So don't complain when we're going through this stuff, all of us. You know, I speak to me. You know, there's, there's a huge process it talks about here to purify this gold. And ultimately, it is worth it in the end. And the Lord told me it would be worth it in the end. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So God knows what the end game strategy for your life is. You now, you may again have been prophesied over these great, amazing words. And if you sit there and do nothing about it, you're not going to ever fulfill and see those prophecies come to pass. Some of those prophecies are dictated upon your own will. If you're fighting it, you're saying, I'm not going to change. I'm, I'm right. They're wrong and you're into all this pride, then you're never gonna come and see the greaterness of what your calling is in your life. You'll never fulfill it because all you're doing is waiting for it to come to pass. Or maybe I know some people that go from conference to conference to, to prophetic person to prophetic person to get a word. I stopped doing that. I don't have time anymore to do that. You know, I hear from the Lord, yes, and it would be nice to have a nice prophetic word spoken over me from somebody, but if I keep doing that my entire life and I never change, and if I still have Jezebel, Leviathan that are whispering to me, causing me to be a horrible person to my spouse, to my children, to be selfish, to be prideful and arrogant, I'm never going to see that come to pass. So the Lord knows that. And so he has to take us through some things that sometimes are excruciating, excruciating pain and stretching us like we were subjected to very high temperatures, like we talked about in the gold refining process, to ultimately burn out the junk impurities that were implanted in us by the enemy through our moms, through our dads, through sexual violations, all that stuff. So it's all good if you can think about it. It's like, I don't want to go through this. There's stuff I go through I don't want to go through. It's like, Lord, take this from me. You know, Jesus knows what that's like. He didn't want to die on the cross. He knew it was going to be painful, but he had to go through it. He had to. Man, I'm feeling really emotional right now. <laughs> I just uh, sensed, you know, what it felt like. It's like, oh my gosh, Lord, you know, it's not good. It's not fun to go through this hell in life. You know, when you're, when you're doing things that are right, and then there's people that come against you, especially those that are married to you, it's hell. It's not good. I know I 
I am sad for people that are married to people that have those spirits because they're awful to them and they love them. Often they lay their lives down for them. You know, and even when they're told about this and they, this spouse, and they want to keep those spirits. They're so prideful and arrogant. So what the Lord's going to do is to make their circumstances worse and worse and worse. He's going to turn up the heat. In some cases, he's going to have to expose it publicly. Say, you won't deal with this? I want to save your life. You're not going to heaven. If you're out there prideful and you're arrogant and all that crap, you know, you can be a pastor and still have Jezebel. I've seen it many times. You can be a pastor's wife. You know, we see this all over. I, I do these deliverances in churches and people get humbled and they change. And then people's like, oh my gosh, I did have this spirit. I didn't even know I had this. And then they end up getting set free and then they get healed from things they couldn't get healed from before. Because if we're having these spirits on us, we're, we're a mess. We have to be honest, we have to look ourselves in the mirror. So through a lifetime of events that can cause us to lose everything. You know, I went through a process, the Lord took away everything. I have no house, I have no home, I have no apartment. I travel 100% of the time. It's just like a real living a real life Paul adventure. You know, I go and stay in people's homes that I don't even know. You know, I stay there for a couple days or a week, it depends on where the Lord wants me to go. And uh, so, and I had to suffer a lot, you know, it was not fun. Um, but I'm just a kid from a cornfield. You know, the Lord humbled me. I'm going to stay humble, I'm not gonna be prideful. And it's a process because if you end up getting prideful, that's gonna mess you up. So you can't just say, well, I'm, I'm humble now, and then go about you know, having more great things and more people speak to you saying how great you are, and then all of a sudden you get back into pride again. So you can't do that. You have to stay humble. It's an ongoing process. You can't just say, well, I've, I've achieved that mountain. I've climbed to the top of that. Of course, you can see mountains behind me. One right there, one right there, one over there. So how funny is that symbolically? You climb up on top of one mountain, you've achieved that. Well, you can't say, I'm good to go, I can coast now. No, you have to keep getting stronger, stronger. You know, the enemy's gonna keep trying to come against you. So the more extreme pain that a person experiences, and the more extreme sacrifice you've gone through for someone else, when you get healed from that, you have the most extreme anointings. That's why we see a lot of people that are not delivered, that are messes, and they could be prophetic people that pray in tongues in the church. You know, and the Lord knows their hearts. He knows their minds. And they're not going to heaven. They think that they are. They have to humble themselves. It says in Proverbs 6, 16, um, you know, there's six things that God hates, seven things that are abomination to him. It says the first thing, a proud look. He hates prideful. When people are prideful, he hates that. He humbles them. And that can be a painful process for all of us. So while it's hard to have faith through extreme spiritual battles, it's a part of the process. There's purpose in the pain that you're going through. So allow the process to continue to produce the new creation of who you really are, who God wants you to be. It's stretching you to allow you to accomplish what God wants you to do. So just let go and let God. You know, so many people that have Jezebel of Ithon, they are just controlling as all get out because why? They're hearing the voice of the enemy saying, you cannot trust anybody. You gotta control them because they're gonna hurt you because you don't trust them because the voice of the enemy has been on you your entire life. You've been hearing that voice. It's like a familiar voice. You buy into that voice constantly. So part of the process, actually I talked about this yesterday with a good friend. Part of the process is you're gonna have to wait. Now often, you know, times you have to do nothing. Why is that? You know, people don't like to do nothing, especially people that have Jezebel Leviathan. They wanna jump ahead. They wanna take control, take authority, do it their own way. In many cases, the Lord's saying, do nothing. Why? Because he's doing something behind the scenes that you can't even see. You don't even know, and you have to trust him for it. Like me, I have to trust him for my, my money. You know, it's like I'm dependent upon people to make donations. I'm dependent upon people to buy books, to speak with places. I'm gonna be bringing on a person full time next week. Gonna pay them more money than I'm being paid because I don't pay myself anything. All I do is use what I need to buy gas and food and uh, a shirt once every three months or something. So anyway, I don't have any place to put it. I have a car, so I can't, I don't have a house. So anyway, many times we have to wait. So when you're waiting, in fact, remember there's a song 
In fact, I would normally play it, but I didn't want to have Facebook to block off the uh, sound anymore. So <laughs> anyway, there's a song in the waiting, I think it's what it's called, that was on the movie, um, oh, Kirk Cameron was in it, um, Fireproof. And he had to wait. He didn't want to wait. He was trying to take it, you know, into his hands. He couldn't do it. He couldn't change it. You know, those, again, that don't wait and they rush in, they try and take it over themselves, they mess it up. They make more messes for themselves. And the Lord's like, really? Why don't you just lay down and do nothing and just trust me? So James 1, 2 through 8 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's a whole part of the crucible process, going through, getting burned off, all this junk that we need to get set free from. So, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, and stable in all his ways. So again, if the Lord's given you a word, circumstances don't line up right now with that, trust him. Don't keep going back for more words. I know a lot of people ask me for words. And it's like, really? Word up, you know? Get your own word. <laughs> you know, go to God. Trust in Him. You know, I don't go to anybody for words, ever. You know? And I, now when I started out, I wanted a word, sure. Because I didn't, you know, I was just starting out to hear the Lord's voice, want to make sure, you know? And uh, now I have to trust the Lord. Romans 5, 1 through 5. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. You know, I am so driven right now. I have such perseverance. Every day I can't wait to wake up. Sometimes I wake up at 1.30. Sometimes I wake up at 11. Sometimes I wake up at 10.30 at night after being asleep for an hour. You know, I can't wait to get things started because God's going to do cool things. Divine connections happen every day. I can't wait. So, but there's tribulations I have to go through and I had to go through that produces this perseverance. So I became a different person. I'm not the same person at all that I was in 2008. You know, I'm coming up on next year will be 10 years that the new Nelson came about. How many of us 10 years ago were not the same person as we are today? Hopefully all of us. You know, I want to always change, get stronger in the Lord. But it says, uh, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. So the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. Kind of like we're talking about the gold process, the refining process. So... So, you know, again, most everyone has pride that needs to go. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have pride anymore. I'm like, really? I go, I'm prideful, and I thought I was delivered from pride a long time ago. You know, we all have a little bit of pride, a little bit of impurities in us. We're all working on that. You know, we're, we're not Jesus. You know, we want to become more like Jesus every day. You know, so, um, so anyway, um, we had to get all these impurities out of us. And that's why sometimes you don't want to wait. It's agonizing. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to wait any longer. I want to do what God you know, has prophesied over me. You know, I got all these words and I'm supposed to be really, really, really powerful, yet I'm not doing anything right now. I have, well, a lot of times it's a humbling process. If you haven't given plasma, haven't given your blood for having to make money so you can actually buy $10 of food for the week and the rest in gas, then... Maybe you need to do that, you know? Don't think of yourself too, pro, you know, too above anything. You know, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to think that I'm above anything, you know, I, but I probably am. You know, it's a process still. And um, anyways, so hopefully this is good. Um, I felt the presence, I almost cried. I try not to cry, try to stay uh, solid for my peeps 
<laughs> Again, I still can't believe that I'm even doing this full time. You know, this is the whole thing. It's like, I keep looking at myself and saying, who am I? Who have I become? Like oftentimes I wake up and I'm like, where am I at? You know, what am I doing? I'm like, how, how am I even doing this? I'm a kid from a cornfield. I don't know, you know, I haven't read the whole Bible through. You know, I need to do that. And the Lord's like, no, you need to focus on doing the ministry right now because I've called you to do this. I've anointed you. You have real life experience of knowing what Jezebel and Leviathan looks like. And you're getting people set free from this. So that's what your focus is right now. You're in, you know, and again, I, I, I'm busy. I'm extremely busy and uh, I'm grateful though because I, I think back to back in uh, just a couple of years ago when I was given plasma back in what, 2015? Uh, even 2016, giving plasma and uh, scoring tests for $14 an hour. You know, it was hard. It was hard because there was times that I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do ministry, Lord. Why am I doing this? And he was in the process of having me start writing my books. So when I did that, um, I was preparing. You know, and then there's other things I had to go through. And uh, he was humbling me too. You know, I still had a lot of pride. When you get rid of that pride, you know, you are a different person. People can sense it on your speech when you're speaking. You know, I talk to people all the time, every day, and I can hear pride in their voice. You know, look at me, look at this, look at that. And I'm like, ah, I don't, we don't want that. We gotta get that out of our lives, it stinks. And the Lord knows it, you know. And um, you know, I'm a different person than what I used to be. You know, I'm not that person anymore, thank God. You know, and a lot of us, we're in different processes where we're going through this and we're going to continue to go through these processes. You know, we're not going to be Jesus overnight. We're not going to be Jesus in a month or a year or 10 years or 30 years. It may take us our entire lifetime to get even close to where we're at. And there's so many people that unfortunately are miserable. They're in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They've not gotten anywhere in life. All they've been is angry at their mom or their dad or their ex-spouses and uh, all those that hurt them. They don't see it. They're clueless with that. So, so anyway, when you're going through stuff and uh, you're getting stretched and you don't like it, understand it's a process and don't complain about it. Otherwise, you'd be like the Israelites in the desert. You'll die out before you do anything for the Lord. There's a lot of people that do that. They complain, complain, complain. They're miserable and they die before they accomplish anything the Lord wanted them to be accomplished. So anyways, um, I see a lot of my team members on here. I see Don, I see Sherelle and Jesse. So Jesse, let me know if you would like to, to do an interview tomorrow. I am uh, thinking of doing one with you and, uh, and uh, uh, Dawn and uh, maybe even Sherelle, if Sherelle's up to it. Um, we have to do it at uh, 9.30 local time in the morning, be kind of my farewell to the Tri-Cities. Uh, so let me know guys, if you guys want to do that, we can do it. That would be fun. I uh, enjoy doing fun things, so let me know. Um, anyway, I will be heading to Portland this weekend, and uh, at this point, um, the Lord may be just having me not do any ministry at all, which is fine with me because it's Labor Day weekend. I would rather just, uh, I'm going to meet with uh, my former boss that I used to work with in business, Mr. Scott is his name, and uh, meet him Saturday morning and uh, connect with some people that I just became friends with a couple weeks ago that live there. They had uh, met me in Spokane that are from a different country, from the Ukraine. So I'll have to speak Russian uh, or Ukrainian. So um, anyway, all right. Um, I think there's anything else. Um, gonna be in Modesto next Thursday. My book, uh, Pure, and, Pure and Spotless. Hopefully will be out available on Amazon by the end of next week. And um, I will be in California for three weeks, uh, next week and the next two weeks. And then I'll be leaving, to going through Arizona on my way to Portales, New Mexico. Be there September the 27th, 28th. Then I'll be going to Dallas for the first week of October. And then Houston, the second week of October. And then I'll be heading up to Tennessee, um, October the, uh, what is it, 14th, 13th and 14th, doing a family reunion deliverance on a Saturday, and then Sunday doing a, a speak or deliverance at a state park, Chickasaw State Park. And then I'll be going to 
a church that's in uh, Campbellsville, Kentucky, the 21st, and then looking to confirm a Messianic Jewish church in Cleveland on the 27th, uh, I think it is, of October, yes. And then hopefully heading down to D Dustin, Florida uh, for a, another family reunion, and then going to um, uh, the Healing Rooms, Tree of Life Healing Rooms in New Orleans. That is in, um, when is that? That is going to be in, uh, well, New Orleans, October, November the 9th and 10th. And so, uh, anyway, um, excited. And I will share next Tuesday the official person that will be coming and joining full-time Restored to Freedom. I always uh, joke that uh, she is the female equivalent of me, so you will love her and uh, she's very funny but she also is very serious got a heart for the Lord heart for people that have been hurt has a great testimony you get to know her more as uh, ministry uh, moves forward so anyways um, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much that there were no rattlesnakes and coyotes and uh, rain and uh, Sun overheating my phone and uh, uh, people that were outside moving rocks can't hear them anymore so yay so all right i will let you guys go and have a great rest of your august 30th have one more day to go and uh life is good life is always good no matter what even if you're going through stuff it's hard it's a stretching process making you stronger to bring you into those great prophetic words that people have prophesied so yes i have great faith amen love you guys see ya bye bye